Need to film, need to film, need to film while I still have energy. Need to film before I fall asleep. Hi guys, my name is Lacey. Let's speak with some fat hips and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Baby face Lacey can only mean that this is going to be a chit chat. Get ready with me. This is actually the second time I've put makeup on my face today because it is like 8 o'clock at night. I worked 9 to 5 today. I'm exhausted. But I'm horribly behind on filming. What else is new? Consistency and I don't get along. I also, if it wasn't obvious, did my base and my brows, hand movements, because if I don't do at least some of my makeup steps off camera, we're going to be here for like 90 minutes talking about God knows what. And just, there's something very specific I want to talk about and I wanted to do it in like a casually friend kind of do your makeup with me kind of way. So that's where we are right now. Also, besides just like working an eight hour day today and just being so exhausted from work, I'm exhausted because I saw Hereditary like two nights ago and I have not been sleeping well since, but we'll get into that. So again, I've said this in like every single one of my get ready with me's. I don't do these to show you guys how to do makeup because I don't believe that I'm good at giving instructions on things like that because I only know how to do makeup on my own face, not on anybody else's face. I don't know. If you guys really want from to blah, tutorials for me in the future, I just feel like there's other people on YouTube who are better at it. That being said, I'm just going to finish up my face because I have like at least five videos I want to film today. So we're going to do that. I'm also going to be playing with, I'm also, I can't, I'm blind, so I'm hoping I'm holding this up okay. I'm going to be playing with the Laura Lee Los Angeles palette because I'm going to be reviewing that in a video that I filmed tonight. So I wanted to put it on my face because to me that was the palette that might have the most controversial opinions on it, if that makes sense. So I wanted to have a video where you could see me putting it on my face in case you were like concerned about how it performs, whatever. So in lacy fashion, I'm going to cake bake my under eyes just so in case there's fallout which I kind of just do this by habit whether or not do you see this do you see this <laughs> I kind of just bake by habit at this point because not every palette requires me to bake because not every palette has fallout but it's just like I'm a human that puts their foundation on before their eye makeup maybe you don't I don't know so it's just easier for me to bake for that reason this is also, again, this is not the shirt that I planned on filming with today. I have a really cute little yellow top picked out that I'm going to be filming in, so I made sure to wear a crappy, oversized, swamp pajama shirt today because I knew I'd be getting powder on my titties. Also, if I block my face doing my eye makeup, I am very, very nearsighted. I'm going to be holding the palette probably like this. I hope you can see from this angle, which squinting at the viewfinder it seems like you can so first I'm gonna backtrack because I brought up hereditary obviously no spoilers because that would be inhumane of me to do what color do I want to go with gonna lay down some undress this is upside down I'm aware the shade undressed in my crease to start out with no spoilers because I'm a human being that hates spoilers and the weird thing is my boyfriend like loves spoilers like he loves to know how things end before we we're done seeing it. Like I'll be like, oh my god, I'm reading this book. It's really great. And he'll be like, okay, then what happens? I'm like, what if you want to read it one day? So, no spoilers. All I'm going to say is it's like one of the most disturbing movies I've ever seen in my life. Like whether or not you think it was scary. Because I think a lot of people equivalent the scariness of a movie to jump scares. And I'm not one of those people. I equivalent the scariness of a film in how much I think about it after I've left the theater and resumed my own life. And also, <laughs> I came back from the theater and I'm soup. I'm a jittery mess and I'm every room in the house is dark and I'm like trying to get into this space and like turn the light on. And my boyfriend's in the kitchen getting food and I'm walking in here alone. And I turn on my light and I look up into the corners because I'm checking the corners. And my brother and I have this, my brother and I, my brother, my, my brother, his girlfriend, me, and my boyfriend all have this running gag to try and prank each other with obviously fake looking bugs, like they're not even like good realistic 
looking fake bugs. They're all crappy fake bugs. And of course, he got like the hugest big one that he could put in the corner of my room. And it got me because I was like expecting something and I saw it and it freaked me out. So that pissed me off. But yeah, and then like last night, I, the second I turned my lights off in the living room to get ready for bed and like walk to the bedroom, blah, blah, you know how it goes when you're making your house ready to go to bed. I was so not okay. Oh God. I'm gonna take a denser brush, go in with strip. I want this look to be yellowy and grungy. But yeah, the second I turned off that light, not okay. Just think everything in that movie. Because the imagery and the cinematography and like, I just, it was from like an artistic standpoint, not that I'm like a fucking film critic, or that I make films, but like, it was very emotionally invoking, just the music, the imagery, the actors, like, and it was just a fucking disturbing movie. I told Georgia when I came home that... <laughs> It was probably in the top three most disturbing movies I ever felt. Like, I was on the verge of tears at different points in the theater. Also, we all know I'm a very emotional person, so that probably has a lot to do with it. Like, for instance, I can't handle when other people cry. And not, like, a little cry. Like, when people are in deep pain and are sobbing, that, like, I don't want to say triggers. Because it's not like it's triggering me into panic. But it just triggers me emotionally into also getting that upset. So, that... Multiple times in the theaters I had to like hold back my own emotions, but just like the imagery, everything, very specific scenes stuck with me past the theater. I said it was top, like I said, top three most disturbing movie I've ever seen in my life. Next to like, when I watched The Orphanage for the first time, I was also like a teenager. I would like to watch it again as an adult and see if it has the same effect on me. But The Orphanage really fucked me up as a teenager. And then this might... I don't know if people will think I'm crazy for saying this or not. Eraserhead, which is a movie that my father really likes as someone who makes films. I don't like that movie. That movie fucked me up. So yeah, that's that's where I stand with her. But I recommend seeing it. And actually, I left the theater like I never want to watch it again. But like plot twist, bitch, I really want to see it again because I there's so much. It's so it's such an intricate movie that you have to see it more than once because you miss so much the first time you see it. And of course, I'm this scared, I'm this like, I immediately go on YouTube and start watching the theories and the like 60 things you missed and like critic reviews and like all this crap. And like my boyfriend's like, it wasn't even that good. <laughs> but we all know I'm a spooky babe. I love me some spooky. I will say that and I really enjoyed A Quiet Place, like really. Oh my god, again, one of the top tier best horror movies I had ever seen. So I'm very impressed that the last two horror movies that I've gone to see in theaters have been this good because normally I'm like wildly disappointed with horror movies. I feel like this light distorts how I see my makeup so much that I can't tell if this is the level of grungy that I want to be. But you know, grungy, it doesn't have to make sense. I am, I don't know if I said this already, going to be reviewing this in another video. I don't know if that video will have been posted before this. Probably. Yeah, probably. I don't know. We'll see how things go. I have, this is my favorite teeny tiny blending brush that I own. And most of my brushes, my eye brushes specifically, are Morphe brushes because I've been brainwashed. I was previously brainwashed by the Morphe cult when I first got into YouTube and makeup, which is going to be a different video that I may also film tonight. We'll see how long my battery lasts and if I feel like I should change outfits or not because I feel like filming five videos in a yellow t-shirt is going to be obnoxious. But yeah, this is the smallest, teeniest, tiniest little like tapered blending brush that I own. It is the Morphe M507. Use code SPOOKY at checkout now. But if I did have a code to any brand ever, I swear I want it to be spooky and that would make my life. Don't I don't actually have a code. In fact, I heard if you use the code adopt love from Mor from Morphe and like all one word it goes to charity so you know if you're gonna use a code or your favorite influencer I don't give a shit I'm gonna go into butt naked aren't I like a real beauty guru when I say shit like that so speaking of spooky there is like I said a deeper reason why I wanted to make this video tonight beyond just talking to you guys about my favorite spooky movies which, you know, that could be a dope video to do in the future. I want to talk to you guys because an idea was brought up to me recently. One that I kind of had myself. 
to begin with, and then someone else validated it for me. That's someone being Georgia. Are we surprised? I feel like I can't go one video without talking about Georgia, but she is my bestie, so, you know, there's that. But, um, I had kind of been thinking about this for a while, and then me and Georgia did Spooky Cast with Smacy on our Half Cousins podcast, which the link to our channel for that is always down below in my description box. But, um, I kind of was a little for lack of a better word, self-conscious doing that one because obviously we all know I believe in a lot of spooky things and I get self-conscious about it because on the one hand I feel like I'm a very scientific person, I'm a very logical person. I just dug my ring into one of these eyeshadows. Oh lord. I'm a very scientific person, I'm a very logical person, but at the same breath I do believe in a lot of spooky things and I there's always this part of me that's hesitant to talk about it because I do fear being ridiculed for it because that's happened on this channel already without me even talking about spooky things yeah <laughs> and um a lot of you guys asked for me going into Nakey Nakey by the way which that's my least favorite name in this palette but whatever a lot of you guys asked me to do more personal more spooky related videos talking about because I do read tarot cards, ask me to talk about that, ask me to talk about spooky stories, ask me to talk about the Stephen King books behind me, which, side note, I read It in 10 days this summer. Oh, I got thoughts about It, but anyway, that's a different video again. But yeah, ask me to talk about that stuff, and I kind of, I'm always hesitant because one, like I said, for one, like, to be fair, you guys signed up for a makeup channel. Absolutely, like you guys signed up for me to give my opinions on things, talk shit about a couple brands, maybe educate you on some stuff, talk about some controversial opinions, which I also think I will be doing tonight. Again, I don't know which video which video is going up first of all the ones I'm filming tonight. So I've kind of been thinking about creating a second place to do all the spooky stuff, right? And I teetered with the idea of a second YouTube channel, but I don't want to do that. I just don't want to do that because I already probably don't put enough time into this YouTube channel. And also, I would want to keep it maybe more, for lack of a better word, safe. Because, you know, everyone on YouTube, internet, everyone on YouTube and the internet, but everyone on YouTube... You know, it's a free platform, anyone can use it. it means, that means, you know, any Joe Schmo with an opinion can come on and be like, you guys are fucking stupid. Not only to me, but to you guys also talking with me. And I'll be very pissed if, like, I did something more personal, more spooky, and then some troll found the video and was like, you're all stupid for buying into this crap. Because I know I'm not a human being that will ever get mad at you for what you believe in if it's not hurting anybody else. So... You know, I like to create as much of a safe place as I possibly can. So there's that. And also I just like, it, I don't, like I said, I I wish I could put more effort into this YouTube channel. And it's, I thought that it would get easier when I was out of school, but it definitely got a lot harder because work just drains all of my energy. So I kind of had this idea in my head and then Georgia said it to me in the podcast and then I brought it up to a bunch of you guys on Instagram for me to create a Patreon where I could post just the quote unquote spooky content. And I know that people definitely have feels about Patreon because when Adpocalypse hit, every YouTuber and their mother created a Patreon with the promises of like, I'll follow you back on Twitter and that way you'll pay me so that way I can maintain my million dollar house. Like, people have a feels about Patreon and right, rightfully so because I do think the idea of the platform was abused in that moment. Because the whole point of Patreon is supposed to be you pay the artist, the creator, the entertainer, whatever, and they're providing you back a service. So if they, if you know, if they, if you're content paying for someone to follow you back on Twitter, you do you. But the idea is supposed to be, you know, artists deliver art, movie makers deliver films, 
musicians deliver music, etc. So, because you can use it to share videos, I was thinking that I could use it. I could use it as a place to share the spooky content that I'm interested in and the spooky content that you guys are interested in in like a safe way. By the way, if anyone ever wonders what I'm doing when I do this with like shadow on my finger holding it up, I'm trying to see what color I want to put on my lid. Because I originally wanted to use this like yellow all natural color but I just feel like then my eyes would be too mustard. And this Jaybird shade is kind of almost like a pink gold duochrome, and I think it'll be prettier. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like if I created a Patreon and kept the spooky stuff away from YouTube, one, it's not free to everybody, so then it's a safe space. Then I can be 100% authentic to myself without that constant nagging fear of, like, is some idiot going to be like, you should get over this and read Carl Sagan, which again, I've mentioned that before, someone has said that to me, and I've read Carl Sagan, I'm good, thank you. And you know, two, it would be something special for the people that are taking the extra step to support me, because you do have to pay for Patreon. I would be making money off of it. Patreon would be getting a cut of it, I believe they take 5%, but I would be getting a little bit of a, you know, like, payment. I'd be getting paid to make content, which I'm currently not, even through YouTube, which is fine. That extra money, even if it's just a couple bucks a month, obviously would help me not only continue the Patreon, but help me continue YouTube, which I know everyone says that. Maybe you guys don't realize how it helps, but it helps me do things like buy better lights, maybe lights that won't reflect into my cameras. You know, look into different editing software, buy different products that I can review for you guys, things like that. Or even if it just helps me with some of my financial stress of, of real life in a way that maybe I could work less, that helps me focus on YouTube more. Like, for instance, the reason why I didn't have videos up in the last week since my collab with Angelica. I'm sure there will have been videos up since then, but the reason why there was a gap between my collab with Angelica and whatever video I posted after that was because I had to work overtime. <laughs> and then, so the one day a week that I normally film YouTube videos on, I didn't have off. And I had to, you know, work and do other things instead. So, you know, there is that financial incentive that helps people do YouTube to a capacity that people want because people want content. It is somewhat of a task to create it, whether it's just taking up my time, my energy, time that I could have been put towards other things, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, either way, I like to do it. But I just, I don't know. I just feel like if I put on Patreon, obviously I wouldn't be like $50 for a video to tell you for, you know, me sharing my tarot collection. Like, it wouldn't be anything like that. I don't know exactly how Patreon works 100%. I know you can either pay a monthly fee for all of a person's content that they create that month or you could pay per product that is produced. I would probably go the per product route because we all know I'm inconsistent and I don't want to have people sign up for a month when I can't produce maybe enough in a month that would make you get your money's worth. So I would definitely be doing a per video contribution and it would just be you know slightly more special in that way slightly more personal so I'd be talking about you know the spoopy things how I got into tarot reading my things about my you know tarot collection because I mentioned in that live stream that I have over 200 tarot decks and people were like what the fuck it would be like I said my ghost stories you know my opinions on why I view things the way that I do spoopy things that have happened to me. It can even branch into more media related things. So the books, the movies, all that good stuff. I could also do personalized live streams that were only for my patrons. Maybe even do tarot readings for my patrons. And I just, I think it's a good idea and I think I want to do it. And I, But I'm only going to do it if people are interested in me doing that. And when I posted this, one on 
the Half Cousins podcast, people were like, oh my god, do it. And then I brought it up again on my Instagram, and people were like, oh my god, do it. <laughs> Some of you even were like, I'm making a Patreon account right now, and that, I, I really appreciate that. So I don't know, definitely let me know what you think, but please understand that, you know, it's, I'm doing, I would be doing it to keep this stuff separate from YouTube because I know a lot of people just don't want to hear it. They're not here for that. They, you know, appreciate that I'm into that stuff, but they're not. They don't, maybe want to get to know me that way, whatever. Um, I'm not doing this as a way to, like, pay me money. Like, it's not about that. It's really about keeping it personal, keeping it safe, and keeping it something special for the people that really want to hear it, for the people who really want to see it, for the people that really want to support me that way by maybe giving me, you know, however much money they want to per film that I do. I don't know. It's in the air. A lot of pe a lot of you guys have said that you like the idea, that you would support the idea. I don't know. Let me know respectfully down below what you think of it. If you're like, fuck Patreon and fuck people who use it, then I don't know what to tell you, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say about that. That this is something that I kind of had thought about in the past and someone else had suggested to me and then you guys thought it was a cool idea. So that's where I am. Alright, so I rubbed, rubbed, that sounds so wrong. <laughs> I applied strip and then a little bit of butt naked and nakey nakey on my lower lash line. Going to put Stark in my inner corner. And then we can move this puppy along. Spoiler alert if I have not posted my review of this palette up yet, but I really love this palette, honestly. Which I was not expecting to. But I do. Okay. Enough with the eyes, enough with the rambling, I'm going to liner fi if that's a phrase, liner fi my face. We're going to get back to finishing up everything else, bronzer, contour, highlight, blah blah blah, and then we'll be done with this. Okay, as always, my eyeliner got way more out of control than I ever intended it to be, but you know what? I've just accepted that it's part of who I am at this point. One last thing that I want to bring up on the subject of the Patreon, just to really like hopefully get my point across that it's not so much about like the making money aspect of it as it is just like the privatized aspect of it. I consider my spirituality to be closely tied together with things like my tarot reading and a lot of the spoopy things that have happened in my life and therefore it's personal to me and that's I guess why I got a little touchy even talking about it on the podcast and it's really for that reason personal because the spooky stuff and I'm just like obviously blanket statement in if that's a verb blanket statement saying that calling it spooky because not all of it is spooky to me a lot of it is you know spiritual and beautiful blah 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 whatever at that part of my life had a lot to do with the happiness that I have now as an adult which again is why I would kind of like it to stay more private on a patreon account rather than another youtube channel and only share it with the people that really care about that stuff so, so yeah, the, that's just my final closing thought on the matter. It's so nice to have color again in my cheeks. Holy shenikes. And then of course, it's not like if I make the account, I'll be like, no spooky things ever on my YouTube channel, wahaha. <laughs> like I'm sure I'll delve into, you know, some spooky stuff that will be available to all because I realize also not everyone can afford to subscribe to a Patreon channel. Even if I do keep it as cheap as I possibly could. So maybe for special occasions like Halloween or, you know, things like that. I could talk about it on my channel because I do want to start the Abnormal Afternoons. I know I brought it up. I never did it. We'll get there. I wanted to... It's kind of dumb, but I wanted to wait until I, like, had my... I wanted my first 
abnormal afternoon. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, Liv Loves Her Makeup does miscellaneous Mondays where she talks about things that aren't makeup related on Mondays. <laughs> and it's, an, it's its own series. And I wanted to kind of do something similar after at either Abby Normal or Abnormal Afternoons, whatever I decide to call it. Calling it one afternoon so I wouldn't be tied to doing it every week because obviously people aren't here for that. Two, I think I don't want to get burnt out on any content and I feel like tethering me to a once a week schedule will do that. But I wanted my first abnormal afternoon to be about my journey in college and how I started studying what I study and how it all happened, my advice about college, things like that. And maybe this is like superstitious of me speaking of spoopy things. Again, I just caught myself looking at the viewfinder, not you guys. Sorry about that. Maybe it's just like spoopy superstition of me, but I wanted to wait until I actually got my diploma to talk about my second degree. Just so I didn't jinx it. I don't know if that makes sense. I just got the email today that my diploma is in the mail. So that will be happening probably the next time I sit down to film bulk videos. Because right now, I know I'm going to film more than one video tonight. Hopefully, if I can three, four, maybe even five. So I will be very burnt out if I burn that, if I burn that, if I film that the same day I film all these other videos that I feel like are important for me to get up, maybe next week. So yeah, maybe for an abnormal afternoon, every once in a while I'll bring some more spooky stuff, some more woo-woo, bullshitty kind of things onto this channel as well. We will see. We are almost done guys and gals highlighter and blush and setting spray and we are done this Ofra highlighter in pillow talk is oh my god one of my favorite highlighters i've ever gotten my hands on in my life it is so beautiful and because i am pale as crap it works so well for me just the pink undertones who every time i wear it someone stops me and is like what highlight is that currently as i film this i have the offspring stuck in my head because I have quite the commute to work and I either listen to NPR on the way to work like a nerd or I listen to one of the many CDs that I burnt for myself in high school. And during the summers I especially like to listen to a lot of punk music because for some reason I just feel like punk music goes with Stephen King novels and I read the majority of my Stephen King novels in the summer. Like I said, I just read it, and then right after that I read The Dead Zone, which all on the shelf, and then currently I'm reading Needful Things. And I just feel like punk music goes really good with, with, with Stephen King novels. I don't know why. So I'm alternating between The Misfits and an Offspring CD. I think the CD is called Smash. But yeah, I have the Offspring stick in my head so bad right now. I'm trying, trying to get through it. Look at this highlight! Especially The Misfits though. Oh my god, listening to The Misfits after reading a Stephen King novel. That's just the best. I realize I'm putting a lot of highlighter on. You guys know what you signed up for. Is there any Stephen King books, by the way, that you're like, Lacey, you gotta read this? Besides everything on my shelf. Everything on my shelf, I've pretty much at this point read. The only book left that I haven't read is... Dr. Sleep and I'm reading Needful Things now and then I have Revival on my like queue <laughs> to read this summer probably after Needful Things and then maybe I'll read Dr. Sleep after that but yeah so then I'm officially read all the Stephen King books you see before you and uh, I'm looking for suggestions I probably I want to buy Gerald's Game let's see what else is on my list? I had a bunch on my list. I'm interested in all the other books that take place in the same town boop, that it took place in. Because there's a couple that take place in Derry. Oh, that blush is pigmented. I think I made a great mistake. Oh, bun, bun, bun. I, oh my god, the second I finished reading it, that night I went to Target and bought both versions of the movie. The old Tim Curry one and the new one. And well, you know, I am kind of that snob that's like, this isn't like how it is in the book. Just personally, I don't know. I think because I invest so much of myself into the books that I read. So, you know, but I also, I realize it's an 1100 page book. Like, of course they have to change crap. 
Also, the kids in it are supposed to be 11. And some of the things that occur with these children, definitely very shocking for 11 year olds to go through. So I can see them aging them up in the movies. That just makes sense to me. But I have like such a deep love for Pennywise, which sounds so dark. Just like, side note, I have this plan to get a tattoo for every Stephen King book that I've read. Oh, and I, I, I know exactly what I want to do for it. I don't know, don't judge me. I have stupid tattoos. You probably do too. <laughs> hey, maybe that's another thing I will do on my Patreon, a tattoo tour. <laughs> Alright, I think I did it. Oh, I could be a real beauty guru. I have the Morphe what continuous setting mist, the one that's really bad for the environment because it has fucking aerosol fucking thing in it. I'm sorry, I'm swearing a lot in this video. So we're just gonna... We're just gonna set our face. For some reason, this shit reminds me of Jeffree Star. I don't know why. I know he... Whatever. I will say it is nice to have such a fine mist because I cannot tell you the amount of times that a beautiful makeup look that took an hour to create was ruined because a setting spray was too, like, thick. I don't know how else to describe it and left, like, droplets on my face. Oh. Maybe just a little more highlighter. Because I can't be stopped. I know the trend of like too much highlighter is dying down, but I can't stop. I can't give it up. I don't care. I don't care. Alright, gonna do lips. I'm gonna get the shirt that I was actually going to plan to film in and my hat. Complete the look and we will be done. Alright, I'm back. This is the finished look and another shocking turn of events. One, I'm wearing a nude. I guess it's kind of like a brownish nude, but still what I would consider a nude. Who am I? Furthermore, it's a stick lipstick, which we all know I hate. Who am I? I'm not wearing my dark liquid lipsticks, but honestly, it's because it's the summer. I just, I get more into nudes in the summer, and I get more into lighter, creamier, nicer formulas in the summer, but you best believe the second it is jacket weather again, I am going full spook once more. If anyone is wondering, this is the ColourPop Lippy Stick in Inkblot, which I love the lippy sticks so much. I actually have a shit ton of lippy sticks. And it's from this, like, box set, this, like, New Theory box set that came out in the spring. Isn't that so fucking cute? Yeah, this is my finished look. You will be seeing this in a couple more videos for sure. And, yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you guys for listening to me talk about spooky things and about a Patreon and... For the people who are already like, fuck yeah, do it, I will support you. Thank you so much. Definitely talk to me down below. Even if it's not about the Patreon stuff, and if it is, I hope that you remain respectful. But if you want to talk about the spooky things, if you want to talk about the Stephen King books, if you want to talk about spooky movies like Hereditary and A Quiet Place and things like that, just chat with me down below. I love talking to you guys. I need to come up with like my own outro. I have an intro, I don't have an outro. I always just end up blabbering at the end of my videos. Let's see, what what could be unique to me? I don't know, if, if this is your first time watching me, I'm sorry that it was a get ready with me that you found me on, but you know, I'm glad to have you here and I hope that you'll stay and subscribe and like if you like me. And if you're not new here, I love you guys so much, you know that. I love chatting with you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me, understanding that I'm still new to YouTube. This is still like my seventh month doing this. I'm still trying to figure out how to balance it between work, school, emotions, boyfriend, life, whatever. Thank you guys so much. I know a bunch of you came over from my collab with Angelica. Thank you guys so much for... Thank you, guys, thank you so much to the new people who have come. Uh, and yeah, just have me down below. Follow me on Instagram because if I'm not on YouTube, I'm definitely on Instagram, mostly talking shit about new makeup releases. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I have strings on my shirt that are distracting. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all on my next video. Bye guys! <laughs>